how the lava's carried some of the Paleozoic stuff with the, the lighter rock in it. Big boulders of it. It's the Zuni Mountain sign. There's Zuni Mountain. And over here, I guess I was right. There is alluvium down here, but we also have, we do have volcanics down here. And the way the sun hits it, makes it shine almost obsidian like but it's not it's, it's the same lava as we've encountered already there's some down there too right next to the paleozoic rocks totally intruding it hello everyone on november 10th 2020 we went through zuni canyon in new mexico after we visited the arcosis and granitic rocks of the precambrian and we had no idea this canyon was even there. We were just following the road. So I, there's there's a lot of video and photos that we took, but there's not a lot of me talking very much because I didn't know what formed the cliffs. I knew they were sedimentary and they were Paleozoic, but beyond that, I had no idea. I also had no idea until we wandered into the canyon that the floor of the canyon not only had alluvium, but also had igneous basaltic rocks. There are two seven and a half minute quadrangle geologic maps that encompass the canyon, but they don't encompass the very west end. So I was going to make you a geologic map, but I didn't have enough information. We didn't wander around enough for me to feel confident to do that. So basically what I'm going to show you here is what has been mapped and the major units that have been mapped. The east end of the canyon, there are some faults and stuff at the very east side. We didn't observe any of that, so I'm just going to go through the stratigraphy. We start out, we have three main quaternary units. First, we have the alluvium, the stuff eroded from the highlands into the, into the valley that, that holds the creek. And then we have basaltic rocks that fill the canyon. And these are awesome. They are generally less than five meters thick. According to the two geologic maps, there's two major flows in the canyon, the Paxton Springs and the Zuni ones. Now, when this was mapped, maybe they were considered two different flows, but the information I found on New Mexico Tech site, it seems to show that the two were related, that the Zuni Canyon was was erupted from the Paxton Springs cinder cone. So they might be very closely related. That's probably why I didn't find any separate dating information or they erupted essentially around the same time. There's also a huge span of time, well, huge compared to our experience as humans, where these things could have erupted. And I didn't dig too deeply into why that is. There may be some issues with how the dating has been conducted or, or the techniques used, or there just may not be enough stuff to date. I don't know. I mean, because, you know, finer grained rocks, and not to have really good crystals to date. But basically, the Zuni Canyon flows are older than the Bendera and younger than the Blue Water. So that means they're older than 9,500 years, but younger than 79,000 years. That's a big, huge gap. So they could be Pleistocene, they could be Holocene. You know, somewhere it, it, somewhere in there. It's, it's, it's a big gap of time for such young flows. Uh, there have been attempts to see if the Native Americans had any record of these flows in the past. And using that, people have gotten 3,500 years. But it's not like it is up at sunset where we have good documentation in the actual village where, where the flow occurred at. It's, it's not like that. So what archaeologists have used to date this thing may not even be accurate. It may not even refer to these flows. There's a little bit of a of a question as to when these things were deposited. Now, now if they these things were 50 million years old and we were getting plus or minus 70,000 years, no one would care, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, but they're so recent, they're so young that that is a huge span of time. And below that, we have a huge unconformity. We have the rocks that make up the awesome cliffs that as you drive through, they're very colorful. And those are Permian in age 
just like the Arcos that I showed you in my previous geophiles in the field, the Permian is made up of three exposed formations in the canyon. The youngest is the San Andreas Formation, which is mostly light to dark gray limestone and dolostone. Underlying that conformably is the Glorietta Formation, which is a white to pale orange and grayish pink quartz aronite sandstone that's well sorted and inner tongues with the above formation. So you know they're conformable and gradational. And the oldest Permian unit is the Yeso Formation. And it's reddish orange to light brown. It's very fine to fine quartz aronite sandstone. And it has inner beds of thin limestone and gypsum within it. It's also very thick. It's, it's, a, it's around 380 meters thick at its thickest. So that's the oldest rocks exposed in the canyon and there they make up the cliffs. Now, after those rocks were deposited and there were probably younger rocks on top of it and deeply buried, well, not too deep because they're still sedimentary, not metamorphose, and they're pretty much level, flat line. There's not too much structure to these rocks. So they haven't changed much from their original depositional position, but millions of years went by. The Paleozoic ended, the Mesozoic came and went, and there are Mesozoic deposits in the area, so it's likely they were deposited here as well and later eroded. But after that, with the Laramide orogeny, that's when sedimentation probably stopped and erosion began, and these canyons began to form. And during the Quaternary, we had igneous, mostly basalts, erupting through the surface. There are cinder cones in the area and these flows came down and as they came up they would incorporate some of the paleozoic rock with them and you can see it in the basalt you can see these massive xenocrysts within the basalts and the ones we saw were likely of the san andreas formation because they were the lightest colored almost white looking so you get to see in the field that as this lava came up through the earth, it grabbed chunks of the country rock and just incorporated it within it without melting it into the melt before solidifying. As you drive into Zuni Canyon from the southwest corner, you are coming from Lahara Canyon. There is no geologic map of that canyon. The two maps stop basically at the Zuni Mountain Stoop, which is the entrance of the canyon. They actually stop a little east of that. And then you get on Zuni Canyon Road, you pass Chute Mesa on the south side, and that's when you start to see the beautiful cliffs, and then you see the igneous rocks in the valley. Now, the sedimentary alluvium intertongues with the basalts. You know, you would get no igneous activity and erosion still continuing on the highlands, adding sediment to the valley, and then you'd get a lava flow on top. And then that would solidify, then you'd get more sediment, and then a lava flow, etc., etc. Anyway, I think that's it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and I hope you learned something.